The Lord is working on me this morning. And so I need a, I need a little detour. So would you open your hymnals to number 72, please? is faithful and I'm just reminded today overwhelmed even by it I had that song sung at my wedding because I knew that God was faithful in bringing JT and I together But I think of how God blesses me through you. Elaine Pipe saying how she tried to visit Jeanette Tanner and wanted to go see Jack Fassett, but didn't know where he lived. So she ended up visiting the Weir Lytles and taking the, thing, the, the Halloween treats to the kids. I think of Andrew, who did this research, who didn't do like most of us, which is just move that banner out of the way as you hang up your coat in the office closet. I think of Jean Moulter, His church home is Carter. But he's stayed connected here. And we've talked many times now as we work through the challenges with his mom. And we lift her up. We need to lift her up. I think of Marilyn, who missed being here so much that she figured out how she could be here on Sunday mornings. And if you notice, I'm so proud of her because she doesn't try to stand when we ask everybody to stand. But she keeps time rocking back and forth. For Diana, whose shoes I want, (laughs) 
for Anita, whose hat I'll let her keep. <laughs> but I could go on and on. I'm just filled this morning. Just grateful for you. And I just needed to say it. And Ken and John and Matt, I'll blame this on you and how God used you this morning. Because I have a sermon. I wrote one. I just don't know if I can preach it. Because I'm just that full. And if I, I'd be afraid that I'd scare you if I, if I really acted the way I wanted to act this morning. But I'm just full and grateful. Thank you, God. Well, Lord. On August 5th, we remember that men were trapped in a mine that caved in more than 2,000 feet below the surface. You remember, it happened about 50 miles north of Santiago, Chile. And they didn't know how they were possibly going to get those men out. It took two weeks, two full weeks, just to even find out that they were safe and alive because they couldn't reach them. They couldn't find them. And the men had managed to make it to a supply chamber. That chamber was about the size of a living room, stocked with food and water. But certainly it wasn't gonna last very long for 33 men. And they were trapped there, left there. Engineers finally managed after a few weeks to get a a hole down to them. It was the hole of a size, the size of a grapefruit, where they were able to find out that the men were okay and in good health, where they were able to send food and water down. But they needed to send more than physical sustenance for their flagging spirits. And so we praise God that people came together from all over. And they were sending them down Bibles, many Bibles with pen lights and magnifying glasses so they could read the word. Someone sent MP3 players loaded up with sermons and scripture readings so they could have that to listen to. They, they came together every night for prayer and for worship. They studied the word. They, they kept each other going. But still, it was a long time. 69 days, we know. Trapped underground. How did they make it? How did they do it? I mean, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. And it took all that time just to develop a solution, to drill a hole and, and, and have an escape evacuation capsule 
This capsule was no wider than a man's shoulder. Literally, these men would have to sort of scrunch in just to ride up in this capsule. But on October 13th, four in the morning, they started lifting these men to safety. Hour after hour, and 22 hours later, all 33 men were up, and we started hearing their stories. One man said, I was with God, and I was with the devil, but God won. I held on to God every minute, and he never left me alone. Another man said, you've got it wrong. You keep talking about 33 men being trapped down there in that mine. But there were not 33 men. There were 34 because God was with us and he never left us. Another man, his name was Jose Enriquez. He, they called him pastor because he was the one that would lead them every night in their prayer and their devotional times. Do you know that just on Friday, he addressed a rally of 145,000 people who gathered together to hear the word of God. And there, Jose said to them, 22 of those men, while we were together, turned to Christ and acknowledged faith in Jesus Christ. And they kept the faith. They grew in their faith. They increased their faith. And because they never wavered, because they did not doubt, because they believed that God would do what God can do, which was bring them out. One man said, I know I'm not supposed to die not seeing my wife again. He knew and he believed. And because they all believed, it was reckoned to them as righteousness. Righteousness. Reckoned by faith. A faith that grew stronger. A faith that did not fail. A faith that demonstrated works because they held on to the hope. Reckoned as righteous. And we can't help but think about Abraham and his faith when we hear a story like that. Because you think about Abraham. I mean, he's in the annals of time as a hero of the faith commended in the book of Hebrews as one with great faith. Whenever we think of Abraham, we think of faith because his life has so many examples of faith, a faith that held on to God and a faith that was active. Do you know that Abraham was 100 years old when God confirmed that he was going to have a child? 100. 100. Now, we don't have anybody in here that's 100 today. 96, right? Right? How would it be, Elsie, if I told you you were going to have a baby? 